Okay, uh, first of all, uh, welcome everybody. It's like uh, every, uh, every clinic, but the longer the day gets, the more people get out and the more people leave and all that kind of stuff. Uh, especially if you're hitting behind Jim with you. He empties all the bases, so there's no RBIs left for me. Okay, first of all, I want to thank uh, the uh, EBCA and ISG for giving me the opportunity to uh, sh share my thoughts about base running with you guys. And I was actually pretty scared. I was pretty scared when uh, Mara was talking, because all of a sudden he started talking about base running. So I thought, yeah, great, you steal my subject, and I don't have anything to say this afternoon. But in his, in his presentation, he said, like, um, scoring runs is not hitting. Well, I totally agree on that one. I totally agree on that one. Scoring is not hitting. Only if you have a Yankee lineup. Then you might produce a little bit with hitting. Hitting baseball is a way to get on the bat. A way to get on. And by running the bases, we're going to get... Uh, we are allowed to get uh, to score runs. So that one thing. Another thing that Mauro mentioned and, and Jim uh, referred to it is we don't we don't practice baseball, and you don't have to put up uh, fingers because I know that the majority in here if they put up a finger they're lying because nine out of ten coaches don't practice base running or don't practice enough on base running. It's very easy. It's like a pitcher. If you have a young guy, and uh, hey, use your fastball or lose it. Use it or lose it. Same thing with base running. Okay? If you don't practice, don't go to do it. You won't, uh, you won't be able to run the base properly. This past year, for example, uh, for example, when, when can you practice it? Well, most of the times, like Mario said, it's going to be at the end of the game, uh, practice, or your BP. Well, in my practices, after the guys are doing the warm-up, they're ready to go to start practice, that's the moment for me to start working on base running. Okay, for example, this year, um, we, were, we were not running the base properly. Actually, we couldn't go from first to third. We couldn't score. We weren't able to score for on the uh, runner on second base on the base hit. We just couldn't do it. So whose fault was that? It was my fault. It was my fault because I thought that those guys, if they were playing at that level, they would be able to do that. Well, they wouldn't. They couldn't. So at that time, we had to improvise uh, base running much more. So what I started with is every single practice, the first. 20 minutes, for about 20 minutes, I focused on base running only. What I did is um, put all the guys, all the guys at second base, for example, I get a, a coach at home plate or at the pitcher's mound, I don't care where you're standing, a bunch of baseballs right there, and he started hitting the baseball. Okay, I put my, my other coach at third base, he's doing, he was coaching, regular third base coach that I have, and he was coaching from, okay, sending the guys or holding the runners. And the only thing the uh, runners had to do was by the time the, the, the coach, Fingo, flipped the ball up, that was the time they took their secondary. And when they took the swing, that's the way they're going to react on the, on, the, on, the, on the ball. First thing from first to third. Guys were on first base, same thing. We were, we were uh, how do you call it? We were doing uh, hidden runs or just base sit in the gaps and going from first to third, picking up the uh, third base coach at the right time and the right, uh, third base coach would say, hold, hold your horses or come through, come through. And the thing is, if you do it, you can't let players just jock around the bases. You have to do it game-wide, game-wide speed. If they can't do it, they can't do it in the game. And I know it, and I know what players will be out coach today. I'm feeling pretty good. My uh, hand is uh, bothering me a little bit. Okay, no problem. Go see the physio, and we'll see what we can do. And you probably won't be playing Saturday. Well, I, if you tell approach players that way, they go like, "I'll be okay. I'll be okay." 
Okay, so after that, I do some uh, combinations. Combo, I, I call it combo drills. What I do then is the same coach is going to hit it, but I put a couple players. I put only a left fielder and a third baseman or a shortstop or a, a center fielder, whatever. And I'm going to hit those baseball. Right now, it's something else. Right now, it's not only reacting on the ball's hit. Right now, they also have to know where the outfielder is, where the outfielder is playing, and knowing where he's playing. And I tell the outfielders, OK, right now, I just move in a little bit. You play a little bit more over to the right side, to the left side, or whatever. Same thing, how they approach it. And base runners have to do that. How many base runners these days, even in a major league, we see standing on second base and looking to the outfielders where the outfielders are playing? Well, not much, uh, not much uh, teams are doing that. And it's actually, it's very simple. You don't have to do anything. You only think, if I run at second base, just look where they are. Okay, right now. I can take my primary, can take my secondary lead now all of a sudden. That ball comes off the bat, and I know that outfield is right there. You can never catch that baseball, and we manufacture an extra run right there. Um, the only thing I know, and I had one of my players was in here this uh, this uh, this morning. I'm pretty happy he left, because otherwise you already knew that uh, we're gonna focus much more this off season on base running, much more. I'm going to do uh, combination drills, I'm going to do games, and everything will be focused on base running because that's much better. There's not much teams in the entire continent of Europe that are able to sit back and let things happen. We don't have the teams. Might be a couple teams in Italy that have the big sweaters. Marto uh, told this morning he had like two guys hitting 10 bombs. Wow, that's 20 bombs. Well, I didn't, we didn't have 10 bombs the entire team. So if you don't have that kind of team, you have to manufacture runs, and you don't have to wait for the big game. Base running. Base running is an attitude. It's very simple. Base running comes out of here. OK? There's a guy. There's a guy who played, as, I think he played like 500 games for the national team of home. His name was from Kloster. Left-handed hitter. Okay. The Italians didn't like him because the thing was, when did Italy play home? That was a tournament. And when did this guy perform? In tournaments. But it doesn't matter what level he was playing, like a regular league game or world championship, world baseball classic. I don't care. If he had... If he hit a three hopper to the pitcher, well, this guy ran home to first as, yeah, as he, he, he was dying. He was running first base out of the ground. He was going to, he was like a train going that way every single time. And if you have that kind of attitude as a team, the other team will go like, you put extra pressure on them. They go like, hey, we got to be rid of the, uh, get rid of the baseball very early. Otherwise, this guy's going to be safe. They're, those guys are flying over the base. And base running and speed are two completely different uh, parts of the game. Base running is one part. Speed is another part. Doesn't matter. doesn't mean if you're a fast runner, you're a great base runner. No, base running is timing. Uh, if you are a great, if you have great timing, and you are a good base runner, and you're a fast guy too. Wow, you're a superstar. I have a guy, might be one of the fastest guys on the face of earth, but this kid don't have the timing. He can't read pictures. Normally, if he has the timing, he would be, able, he should be able to steal like 30, 40, 50 bases a year, while he had approximately eight thrown out two or three times. So, and this is, my, this is the fastest guy on my team. I don't say click, but I did click myself. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, the later you go on the day, and I know it because I've been there like a hundred times, and I know what, what's happening. And I, when I was sitting right there, I was talking to Mauro uh, uh, earlier today. I said, watch that guy, watch that guy, watch that guy. And we're going. <laughs> so I have this one right here. 
<laughs> so if I see somebody, I'll throw it so you better be ready to catch the baseball. Mark, can you hold it? If I flip like that, you know. Okay. I start my presentation with two short, uh, short movies with two, uh, two things that can happen in base running. Okay? Okay, first up, speakers are on? Yeah, okay. Cue ball on a changeup right off the end of the bat. And Sherry comes to the plate. Cameron Rupp does a great job. Culligan tries to stay in a rundown but does not. The runner from second base that? did not the break early. He did. Two unassisted, two outs on Ready one play. Into a double Kevin Rupp play. excited about, about it. Really and all of a sudden, the Longhorn's out of a huge right. jam. Oh, my God. Fuck. What's happening to me today? Okay, how about this one? Excuse me of the bat. Uh, Nathan Perez on deck. So Rivera leading from first. Grace holding on the bag against him. The pitch. Swing it. There's a shot. Deep in the right center. Racing back to Lucci. Still going back in the deck. It goes right over his well. He missed it. But Ruben Rivera missed second base. Now he's heading for third and they're going to throw him out by Freddy. And that was the worst base running in the history of the game. The game should be over, and Ruben Rivera just did the, the worst base running you will ever see. Unbelievable. Ruben Rivera had gone around second base, and then for some reason, seemed to assume that the ball was caught in the outfield. He got totally lost and confused out there and started to go back to second base as Grissom was pulling in at second. Ruben Rivera was the only man in the ballpark, apparently, who did not know what just happened. And that was the worst base running in the history of the game. Can you imagine? This was, for example, it was the last inning. The game was on the line. It could have been the winning run. Okay, that's the thing. Is, the thing is that okay, this wasn't the manager's fault, fault because they did worked on it. This was just stupid ball player. Okay, but what I mean with that is he's in Mexico now. <laughs> Plays Mexico now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the only thing you have to do, guys, is is base running as much more responsibilities and, and in, the, in the game of baseball that we as coaches put time into it, okay? We hit for hours, we field for hours, we throw for hours, and we base run for about five minutes. So take that into your, uh, into your program. Okay, today in lineup uh, about base run, we're gonna talk a little bit about mental approach, Home to first, uh, turns at first base, uh, runner at first base, runner at second base, runner at third, and we're going to talk a little bit about base stealing. Okay? So, the main thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you around the horn today. Okay? Mental approach. Well, first of all, pre green during the game, and in the on-deck circle, these are three situations where we can absorb a lot of information about the opponents. And if we are in the league that we play that team, that pitcher, that catcher, whatever, play that several times, we might know other info from previous years or previous games. But for example, if you don't, if you play a team in a tournament, international tournament, whatever, you don't know the uh, team, these are three moments you can start to know a lot about the opposing uh, team. Pre-game, 
What can we take out of pregame of the uh, opposing team? Well, first of all, it provides valuable information about our strength and accuracy, the quickness, defensive ability of each player. Okay, how does he react on ground balls? Uh, how does he react on fly balls and all that kind of stuff? Uh, double play pivot and tendencies. Okay, if, is there a second baseman always going? Doesn't matter where that feet is going from, always going back on the back, or he's always throttling the back, or coming over the back on every single play. These are all things that your players have to absorb and have to take into the game. And of course, almost fell off, but it doesn't mean it's less important. It's very important that your players know the field conditions. Okay? The guys who had green light that Mario was talking about, and for example, it rained like four or five days in a row, and at first base it's like, well, field crew did it. Tremendous job, but actually, it's very hard to get away right there. So, they have to know, they have to check out before the game how the conditions are. Infield grass, is it short, is it quick, is it slow, is it uh, high grass, whatever. You gotta know. During the game, also during the game, we, we have the possibility to add more and more information. About, for example, about the pitcher. What are his stretch delivery tips? The entire day, and yesterday, I was there in the chair, and there was one, one word that came back in every presentation. And what was that word? The stopwatch. The stopwatch is the number one, the number one tool to be a good coach. Okay? And of course, of course, pitch tendencies. How do they pitch? Are they throwing the same uh, kind of pitches in the same counts and all that kind of stuff? These are things we can, uh, I call, we can keep track of during the game. Oops. Infielders. What can we see about him? How do they cover bases? <coughs> How do they hold runners? For example, what are the middle infielders doing? Is it always a shortstop coming over? Is it always a second baseman coming over? Are they switching around? Aren't they doing anything? And, like I said, especially regarding middle infielders. Okay. Catchers. What kind of information could a catcher give us? Does a catcher drop to one knee if he throws back to the pitcher? If he does, well, this is hard. You might get a delayed steal on this guy. If you always catch a baseball and always go, comes like this, throwing the ball back, okay, you can't put a delayed steal on. Base runners who can't steal uh, pitch signs at first or second base will improve their steal percentage. Mario talked briefly about that. Hey, if those guys can pick it up, uh, breaking ball, change it, gone. Okay, I don't care. And if, you, if you're going to steal bases, you're going to get thrown out. Of, that's for sure. I mean, things happen. And you, don't, you won't get thrown out, again, uh, thrown out at the base if you don't try to steal. If you don't try to steal, you're going to have a hard time to uh, provide runs. OK, should call the pitch uh, calling tendencies of the opposing catcher. OK. And of course, also the tendencies of the catcher backing up bases. Hey, if I hit a ground ball, third base, third base the fields hit, throw the first base, is the catcher backing up with no runners on the back? Is he doing that or not? With a runner on first base, double play situation, is the catcher backing up first base or isn't he? These are things that a base runner should know. You know, okay? Well, hard hit ball to the shortstop, double play. We know the catcher isn't covering. Overthrow, we can go to second base right away. But if we know that catcher backs up every single time, we know, okay, we can't any, take any risk right here because this guy is going to be right on our ass. Outfielders, why can't they give uh, some kind of information during the game? Continue to study the outfielders to uh, determine how aggressive they are on ground balls or fly balls. How accurately do they throw? Okay. 
A lot of outfielders during infield outfield, they won't show your gun, or if you are in tournaments, if you play every single day, they will just go through the motion. But in the game, they're not going through the motions. They will give you 100%. And if he gave that, um, that particular moment, he will give you just to going through the motion. That tells me if this kid is hurt and we're going to run on him all day long. Will they, will, will they throw behind runners? That's pretty interesting for my base runners to know. Okay, if we know they don't throw behind base runners, I can take a much bigger turn on second base. I know the outfielders always throw to the next base. They never throw behind the runner. We can take, we can be extra aggressive, take extra steps to the next base. Backup tendencies. Are they lazy? A lot of outfielders are lazy. One of my biggest, I was one of the biggest uh, European fans of one of the biggest European players that <coughs> I think there, there, there have been. And there was an Italian guy named Roberto Bianchi. And he was a catcher in the DH and blah, blah, blah. And at the end of his career, he went to Parma. And at that time, I just came up. And he had the ability to, to play Parma in the European Championship. And I was playing to the guy that since a child, I was looking up to him and said, wow, I get the chance. And he was play, playing right field at that time. Well, he was playing right field. I think at the end of the tournament, there were like two yellow spots on the grass. That were the spots where Bianchi was standing the entire tournament. He didn't move one step to the left, one step to the right. So if you have outfielders like that, and you know that if this guy is playing right field and, and he never backs up first base, that's pretty interesting to know for a base runner that there's a bad throw. The on deck circle. On deck circle gives us a ton of information. And we have to do, of course, and that will, uh, that's something we forget a lot, uh, we have to be a coach in the on deck circle if there's a possible run scoring. Okay, you have to score, uh, you have to coach the runner. You have to hustle to the play. You have to hustle. No, ju not just walking out there. You gotta hustle out there, you gotta be there. You gotta be in a visual line with the runner. And then you have to give a verbal and, of course, a visual sign for him. Okay? You have to go you have to decide if you got uh, to slide on the inside part of the uh, whole play. You got to get down, get down, you got to wave him that way so he knows he has to take the inside or the outside part of the play to slide in. Okay, and of course, if it's going to be a rundown, you got to point in third base, get in the rundown, get in the rundown if you see that thing's going to run out of hand. Home to first. Three basic reads the runner makes. Uh, moving, uh, moving first base. Home to first, what I mean with that is as a hitter, I swing <coughs> it's going to be a ground ball. It's going to be a ground ball. I don't know if it's going to be through the infield or at the infield. I don't know that at that particular moment, at contact. So, you're going to have three, three basic reads. Ground ball, first base, and overthrow. Okay? Ground ball. After I hit the baseball, I'm going to start running approximately third step. I look in just a little bit like that, just a peak. Can't slow me down, of course, just a little peak. And then it will tell me, is the ball played by an infielder? Yes or no. If it isn't, then at that time I be begin my angle on the grass to take my turn for second base. Remember to glance at the ball, I said that a little earlier. First baseman, right now, we hit the baseball, it's right at the infield. infield. I'm running towards first base. What information will the first baseman give me? If the throne is made at the first baseman, the runner should read the body movement of the first baseman. If he moves down the line, the runner should avoid the tag and make a slide. Okay? And if he comes in, he 
you get those first basements going like that, and give one of these. There's old plate. Get it throw from the short stuff, you have to come this way and attack, sweep that. That time, if my I want my guys, if they see that guy moving down the line, I want them to get down and away like like some kind of a hook sliding head first at first base. To avoid that tag. On all other plays, focus on the front edge of the base and run through the base in a straight line. Guys, first of all, make your players be aware to run through the base, not to the base. Okay, because when you run to the back, they will start losing speed before the back. Okay? If this is the back, where would we where would we touch the back? Where would we touch the back? Where would you got uh, you as coaches say that you have to touch the back on that particular part of it. Front edge. The front edge. Why would you say front edge? The shortest distance from home plate. As simple as that. Simple as that. I don't want any of my base runners see hit the back on top of it. First of all, that means they're running farther and of course with the bases today and the kind of weather we have to deal with, except Mara doesn't have to deal with it, but we do, uh, with the rain and, and slippery and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty dangerous, dangerous too. So the front part of the back, right here, right there we want to touch the back. Well, I tell my players, if you touch the back, and it's the same, the same thing right here, you guys are an umpire, by the way, umpire, Umpires are like the greatest people on the face of earth. I'm just telling you because there's one in the audience today. So. By the way, what would we do without them? You know what they say about umpires, do you? No? Well, was once a coach, uh, no, was not a coach, was an umpire. He told me, he said, Steve, actually, I prefer to play baseball. He said, yeah, what, what? why aren't you playing ball anymore? Well, he said, I couldn't see well enough to play the game of baseball. So they gave me a special job that made me an umpire. So, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so if we hit the bag right here, if we hit the bag right here, I want my players to put their chin on their chest right here. If you are guys the umpires, what's the difference? For me as a runner, it's nothing. But as you, you guys as an umpire, this looks further over the back than this. It's the same step. The only thing I do is I put my chin against my chest. And that will give a completely different view to the umpire. And that's a, on a bang bang play, it's just visual for the umpire. Oh, it seems to me that he was over the bag already, so he's safe. Okay, excuse me, about straight line. I want all my guys to finish up on a straight line. And I see like a million base runners, if they touch the bag, go that way. Why would you go that way? Yeah, but my, my coach told me if I have to stay behind that, but if, if I'm in between the lines, that first bag, Basement can tag me. No, he can't. As long as you don't want to go to second base and you don't want to make a reaction toward the back, I don't care. Right here, <coughs> run through. Why? By the time you get over the back, right now you're going to slow down, and I peek, I take a glance. I don't do this shit, I don't do that shit. Just straight ahead, I take a glance right there. If that ball's right there, I'm in a direct line towards second base ready to go. Okay, if I'm right here, I got to turn around and start running towards second base. Overthrow. As the base is reach, turn the head right to find possible overthrow. Just told, told you guys that. Don't forget to check, and that's very important, don't forget to check the fence in pre-game. Just go. Let, let players go before the game. If that's a field you don't play a lot, 
Hey, what kind of fence is it? Just take a baseball, throw it in. Okay, it doesn't jumps back the baseball. Great. Now we know. If I throw it against and it jumps hard back, got these things, these type of things, you have to know. It, for example, like the other guy who was running the bases on the second movie, if we didn't find out how the fence of the backstop, how hard the ball gets back to us in the ninth inning, and the winning run runs to home plate on the pass ball, and the ball and the catcher, the only thing I have to do is turn back, the ball jumps back and tag the runner. We should know those type of things. Turns at first base. Okay. When I hit the baseball, and by the time I hit the baseball, I know the ball is going to be past the infield. The ball is going to be in the outfield. I want every single runner think one thing, double. I want every single guy going hard out of that box, and I want them to go to second base. Every time. Never assume, never assume that an outfielder makes a routine play. Anything can happen. I hate those kind of type of players, and I know that you have like a ton of them on your team. Base hit. And the way they're running, they start to grow. Like, you see me getting that hit? I hate that. You gotta go out of the box hard, you gotta take a hard turn, I want you to be on second base. If that uh, outfield just bobbles on the ball a little bit, or he flips the ball in, I want you to take extra bases on that play. Round first base aggressively. Begin, begin the angle soon, as soon as the ball is through the infield. That's like earlier. If you know it on contact, I want my guys to start their angle right away out of the box. I don't want them to go this way and then start their turn. If that ball is out of the, uh, on contact, you know that ball is in the outfield, right away, first step, angle. Why? Because if you go that way and that way, just a couple extra steps, and on a bang bang play on second base, we'll be siding very in or out. Hit the inside part of the base, of first base. This is first base. I want to hit the inside part of the base on this side, on the inside part, so I can use it as uh, I call it. Uh, I call it the, what they use starting blocks. Starting blocks. Here you go. Use it as a starting block. And I want it to touch the base with my left foot. I want it. Do I have to? No. I don't want guys to go like this. Hey, left foot. And now I can go. No. If it doesn't work, take your right foot that time. But we teach left foot. Why a left foot? Well, if I touch it right here, I can use this arm to pull myself in a direct line towards second base to uh, avoid run extra. Uh, distance. Turns at first base. The length of the turn at first base will reflect the location of the ball in the outfield. Right field is a smaller turn. What I mean with that, if this is the bag, uh, I'm going to put it, okay, home point is right there, second base is right there, guys. A base hit in left field, base hit in left field, I can touch right here, and I'm going to square up my shoulders toward the baseball, and I can go a long distance. I almost can go halfway if that ball is in left field. Yeah, but what if he throws to first base? Yeah, great. And I'm on second base. Okay, that long throw, I can go do the moonwalk to second base. That's in anyway. If that ball is in center field, more there. Okay, Major League Baseball is center field. I can sw square up, and I run toward the baseball right there. It's a less distance, of course. Right now, if I go, go back, I keep on looking, keep an eye on the baseball, keep an eye on the baseball, and go back along to first base. If the ball's in right field, if the ball's in right field, I touch the back, I run directly toward the baseball right there, and come back. Okay. Why? That way, why not this way? Well, it slows me down. If that guy, if that guy is, uh, how you call it, uh, dropping a ball or whatever, right here, I, I'm in the straight, I'm straight away back. Okay. 
face and shoulder short the baseball, squared, retreat to the base without losing excitement of the baseball, and decide to go to second base, rest with the runner. Okay? I give a lot of responsibility on my players. It doesn't mean that I don't want my uh, uh, base coach to be involved. Yes, of course I want them. But in the majority of the cases, the ball is before the base runner. If the ball is before the base runner, the base runner can decide himself. Okay? So, and be aggressive at second with two outs. Guys, if you can't score a second base with two outs on a base hit, you're doing a bad job as an offensive team. Okay? You're doing a bad job, or you're taking bad leads and breaks, or you're not reading the, uh, you're not doing good uh, secondaries, or you're not reading the, uh, the, uh, the pitches or whatever. It's so important. A little fall right here. A little mistake. Okay. On base, on base hits, we run out at second base. The batter runner should go home to second. When the runner from second is scoring on the play, a home play will be close. Okay? So run to second base, base <coughs> hit, guys trying to score, send the guy to second base. Okay, the guy's out, at home play, I don't care, we have the same situation. You get an out, okay, but they have to make uh, three good plays. You have to catch the ball, you have to throw the ball, you have to catch, you have to catch the baseball, and to make attack. And make four plays, we only have to run base start. If down two runs, or with two outs in the ninth, the batter runner should not advance in this situation. Okay? Okay, we're not going to run us out of the game at that particular moment. The batter runner should also go to second when the outfield throws the ball out of reach of the cut of man when the running a runner at second base is trying to score. Okay? You know you know the situation, the uh, cutoff man is right here, the ball's a little bit too high above. You have to jump or whatever, send this guy. Same thing, runners should remember to be aggressive at second base with two outs and third base with one out. They should not make the first out at second base or the third out at third base. Okay? They have to keep that one in mind on these plays. This might be, this might be most important thing I'm going to tell you guys today. BSBD. The white guys get on the back, first base, second base, third base, I don't care. They first, th the first thing they have to do is BSBD. The first B stands for find the ball. Where's the ball? Where is the baseball? Second B is get the center. Right, I'm, I'm going to run at first base. Where's the baseball? At the pitcher? Okay, I know where the baseball is at. But I'm going to uh, pick up the sign. Third thing I'm doing, get the sign, look at the scoreboards. Okay, we got one out, yeah, one out, yeah, one out, yeah, okay, right here. We got one out. I got to know how many outs there are, and of course, the score of the ball game. But I assume if you're playing, you know, the score too. And of course, uh, what inning is it? Are we late in the game? What kind of situation are we in? And so on as well. And then the last D, check the defense. Where are they playing? Are they playing in on this guy? Are they playing out? Are they on a shift? <coughs> How about that? Are they on a shift? I think that a certain guy named Johnny Damon did a pretty good BSBD when they, those guys were playing the, uh, those guys were playing the uh, Phillies. Because he stole second, and he knew that they were playing the shift, and the third baseman had to be at second base to make the tag. That ball slipped away, and he knew immediately, because he checked the defense, that there was nobody covering third base, because the third baseman had to go to second base. They gave away third base, lost the ball game, lost, lost World Series. Okay? Primary leads at second base, uh, first base, excuse me. Technique is very simple. Right, left, right. What, we, what, what I mean with that is I start with my right, right foot. It's going to be a right, left, right. And now it's going to be one, two, and a half. This is my lead. Perfect. How big 
How big of a leap do you have to take? What's the standard measurement of a leap? There isn't one. Depends on the person. Yeah, but what's, yeah, there is one. Oh, three and a half. No. Body length plus a step. Body length and a step. Okay, we're going to check it out. Okay, check it out. It's going to be my body length. It's going to be right here. Okay, right there. And one step. If you do it, I've done it a hundred times, a thousand times, I don't know how many times. I didn't get on base much, so that was, <laughs> was easy for me. Uh, but if you do it so much, you know it, it's going to be a right, left, right. Now, all the coaches go, but yeah, but if you start right here, now you're going to cross over, now this guy throws. Yes, so what? It's one step, boom, right here. Okay? The only thing you have to be aware of, if it's going to be a right, left, right, it's not one of these. Just normal steps, like you're walking in a shopping mall or whatever, it's going to be right, left, right, and now it's two and a half extra. But right now, this is very important. I can take a chance to put my two feet together. If I'm right here, I'm lost. There is not one uh, sporting event that you should be like that. Yeah, gymnastics, if you're done. And you should be like that. On the other ways, every sporting event, if you were a supporter, basketball, defensive basketball, defensive soccer, defensive lineman, I don't care. If you're like that, you're done. You're out, you take yourself out of the ball game. What happened? If you go back to first, you do <laughs> Right, left, right technique. Secondary release. Two short shuffles, keeping the shoulder square to the infield. If this is my regular lead right here, now I've got to my secondary. It's going to be two shuffles, keeping the shoulders square to the infield. It's going to be one of these. Boom, I'm right here. Okay? If we do that, okay, if we do it the correct way, and my lead was somewhere up here, Right now, I take two extra aggressive uh, shuffles. I might end up right here. What do that tell you? If you're the uh, defensive coach, what does it tell you? I'm ready to go, but you're a defensive coach. I'm not going. What do you tell your catch? The throw behind you. <laughs> of course, throw behind me. So if you're an aggressive, an aggressive ball club running the bases, it's not only aggressive that way, but it's also aggressive on the way back. You can't afford, if you end up right here, giving one of these to go back, boom, right here. Now he's throwing, you're done. No, if you're aggressive this way, and this ball passes the, passes the hitter, you've got to be ready to go back. Okay? Runners should focus on hitting zone or follow the ball flight to improve reaction to the bad ball. That's that's literally the stuff. You, of course, we know we have to focus on the hitting zone, see what's happening. Runners should advance on balls in the dirt. Actually, I put this the wrong way. If we react, advance, if the ball is in the dirt, we're too late. You got to read the plane of the baseball. You got to read the plane of the baseball. If you see that ball, that ball's going to bounce, take off. Okay? Cash can do two things. He can try to scoop it and throw you out. And if he does that and he throws you out, you got to tip your head, go play, big guy. But I tell you what, you might be thrown out once of 20 or 25 or 30 or 40, I don't know how much attempts. Most of the catchers, they will give up and try to block the baseball. Okay? And if they try to scoop it, you put extra pressure on them. They go like, shit, he's running. I got to scoop it. I'm not good at scooping. He tries to scoop it. Ball goes by him. Now we're running on third base. Why? Because our attitude sends out a message to the opposing team. You better be ready because we're going to run on you guys. That's I'm not going to say too much. I might face tomorrow, next year. Primary lead, second base. A uh, six step lead, beginning with the right foot. This is second base, it's just a six step lead. It's going to be one, two, 
three, four, five, six. A little bit further. This is going to be my lead at second base. Okay. What I want my players to do with less than two out, I want to be in the line to third base. Same thing like the gentleman uh, uh, answered a little bit earlier because the short, shortest way between two points is straight line. With two outs, with two outs, I take my six steps, I end up right here, a normal leaf, going to be right here some, somewhere, and now I want them to go like one, one or two, or one and a half back. Right now, I have, I created that angle to score, to get that turn at third base properly to score. Okay? Hey, Steve, what about guys also with less than two out? They get like a step behind. I don't care. This is basic and it's standard. But what you can't forget is that not in every individual has the same abilities. And, and whatever he feels comfortable, if he feels comfortable to start a little bit back in here to get that turn to score, great. I don't mind. But it wouldn't mind me if he got thrown out by half a step because he gave up. If he does that, fine, I don't care. But you have to take a good second there and be ready to uh, take third base on a bomb dirt. Secondary leads. Same thing, two short shuffles. But be aware of the inside move. Pitcher always can, if he's right here, don't go on here already because he'll still be able to come here this way and put an inside move on you guys. Okay? Happens everywhere. World Series, what was that? Uh, Philadelphia playing the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. Inside move. Game number seven, winning run, second base. Inside move, <coughs> boom, out, in between. Next inning, Joe Carter hits a homer, done. End of the game. Advancing on, bait, uh, on balls in the dirt require, uh, requires the runner to read the balls of the catcher's body. Okay? If you, if you take your secondary and that ball's in the, in the ground, and you have, shit, I got a bad jump, I can't go. But right now, you still can't read that ball of the, of the pro, body protector, see where that ball jumps at, and even take a, a, actually some kind of a delayed jump and get uh, next base. May third base uh, coach stop you and always think score. Uh, that's, that's a good thing right here, guys. If I'm a base runner, I think score, 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 till that third base coach is in front of me with his both hands up and you're going to stop right here. Okay? So don't, don't commit yourself like, okay, I wrote from first to third, that's enough for me. No, I want to score. Okay, running at third base, B, S, B, D again. B, S, B, D. First B, what's for? Ball. Ball. S. Size. B. Board. Board. D. Defense. Here you go. Primary lead, a third base. This is third base. Same thing. Right, left, right, square. Right here. And we're going to do a little big back right here. This is going to be our lead at third base. And with our lead at, at third base, we're going to take it in foul territory. I want them to take it on fair. And now I'm going to put like one or two, one and a half, two steps back. Secondary lead. Right, left, right, walk. What I mean with that, okay, I got my... This is not the base anymore, the base is right there. This is my primary right here. What I mean with that, <coughs> right, left, right walk, is by the time that pitch goes, it's going to be right, left, right. And by the time this right foot hits the ground, it's going to be near the foul line. And by the time this is right here, that's the time the ball crosses the plate, something's going to happen. Okay? Ball on contact. I can, I'm, I'm ready to go. If that ball's hit, I'm ready to go. If, if it's a fast ball, I'm ready to go. If the ball's get, uh, caught by the uh, catcher, I move on the inside part of the, of the baseline. I'm going to keep on looking, and I'm going to run hard back. Why am I going, uh, going to come on the inside part of the infield back towards third base? 
Vision of the catcher. What else? In the line of throw. The line of throw. That's even more important. Okay, I want him in the line of throw. I want him, if he wants to throw, I want him to make, throw the, give him a hard throw, throw it over me or next to me, whatever, something can be messed up and that ball skips away. Okay, but very important, very important, if this is my uh, primary relief, it's going to be a right, left, right, right here. But what I see on every ball field, everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, is these things. By the time that ball crosses the plate, that, that runner is all, already going that way or leaning that way back. Doesn't mean, doesn't matter which level of play. WBC, World Championship, Major League, in Europe, Little League, everywhere. Still people are doing the wrong way. As the ball passes the hitter, runners should cross over in fair territory to interrupt possible pay. We talked about that. Base stealing. Going to steal second base. The base stealer has to know his own speed. That's something. What I mean with speed is actually not the right way, but it's, speed, uh, it's uh, base stealing time. He knows, okay, if I'm running at first base, I know my time. I'm three something towards second base. That's going to be my time. Perfect. Because mm -hmm. Like we said earlier, that first baseman has, uh, the first base coach has that stopwatch, and you can make a measurement. Catcher is two or, 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 or slower, it's 2.3, 2.2 throws, and that, that uh, pitcher is like 1.4, 1.5. Okay, we're going to run all day. We're going to run from first and third, third and fourth, uh, uh, first and second, second and third. Okay? No we catch a release time. No stretch deliveries, times of the opposing pitcher. Reading the pitcher, what does he give us? What does he give us to work with? What is his head doing? If he's a righty, okay, for example, he's always going one of these, uh, one, two, boom, and he's going. Or if you're a runner, say, Jimmy's a runner at second base, okay, boom, give me one look, throw, give me one look, throw, give me one look, throw. Give me one look, gone. Okay, these are things we have to be aware of. What does this torso do? For example, lefties. Okay, they are, by the way, lefties are the easiest pitchers to steal on. It's the easiest pitchers to steal on. Because why? Because by the time they set up right here, and Mike, Mike can shoot me right now, but I don't know, but Mike, I think 90% 90, 90 of the lefties, by the time they come up right here, they decide what they're going to do. 90% of the pitchers. They decide right here, I'm going to pay. Boom, big. I'm going to go home. Boom, I'm going to go home. And not a lot of pitchers. My, maybe 1 out of 10, 1 out of 50 of the lefties. <coughs> when they come in here and say, I'm going home, and this guy is going on first move, going to be not a lot of pitchers who can adjust and pick. The pennants of this world can do that, but that's one of the, uh, uh, I call it, last boys cards who can do it. Lower body. What does his lower body tell me? Okay? What gives he, gives he, uh, gives his away? Front foot? Is it guy front foot or have to look at uh, back leg? Or is it a guy that dips and drive? It dips, boom, I'm going. All the kind of stuff, <coughs> try to get something out of it. Basic break. If I'm a runner at first base, I got my lead, my open lead foot, my lead foot, front foot, okay, it's a little bit back. I, I teach half foot inside step right here. This foot is open. Why is this? Well, first of all, first of all, 20, I think like 20 million baseball books, and in uh, to all 20 million of it, they are talking about uh, crossover. Well, for me, <coughs> crossover does not exist. I can't crossover. Okay. What I can do, if I'm right here, and this foot's a little bit back, not like this, because I'm not always think that way. I can be able to go back too. Right now, I can open up 
and I'm in a perfect line to run. If my feet are together, what I have to do right now, that's second place. If my feet are together and I have to start running, the first thing I have to do, I've got to go that way. So I'm going to lose a couple, a couple centimeters at second base. If I put this one a little bit open, I turn, and right now I'm in a direct line with my hips and my shoulders towards second base. Load the front side. What I mean with that, load the front side is it's going to be loading that pin on this leg right here, ready to go, ready to go. Ready. How, many, how many runners they want to see, so still base? You, you, you see them with this with the flag going up, poof, and gone. Okay, load up right here, and now we're going. Stay low and explode. What I mean with stay low and explode is starting the athletic position right here. By the time you're going to run, stay right there and start running. If I got a runner, if I'm a runner, and the first thing I do is come out, I'm going to lose momentum. I'm going to lose speed towards second base. I was talking to Jim a little earlier, and I, I was coaching this little league team uh, way back. And we were, we were not working on base running. We were working on fielding. And like two, three weeks, four weeks in a row, we work on fielding, but I couldn't get all those eight-year-olds in the right perfect fielding position. By the way, the perfect fielding position is the perfect running position, <coughs> is the perfect basketball uh, guard position, because that's the athletic position. That particular moment, after four weeks, I said, shit. I can't get those guys right here. They were back, uh, straight up with the chest. I can't get it. What do I have to do? All of a sudden, I got in contact with a guy who was coaching volleyball. This guy was like 70 years old. And we were talking about sports in general. And all of a sudden, I said, this guy I said, hey, listen, how do you coach youngsters? After the serve, you've got to be ready in this position to do the defense. How do you coach the youngsters, the little guys, the very little guys? How do you coach them to get in that proper position? So it seems very easy. I say, oh, yeah? So I'm working four weeks in that position. You can't get them there. So what's it up? Next practice, you say to the kids, go to your dad, ask a tie, and you come out practice with a tie. The next practice, all those little little leaguers, eight-year-olds, baseball uni, tie. All the parents out there, the next one, what the hell is he going to do today? Well, it took me two seconds to get them in the right position. The only thing I have to say is, okay, guys, listen up. We're going to try to be as low as we can in this position, and the tie can't touch your upper body, okay? Boom, and everybody was in the right position. Everybody was in the right position. It took me two seconds. I was working four weeks for about an hour, an hour 30. Couldn't do it. And from that moment on, so what it tells us, and same thing, stay low, explosive, it's that thing. This is my time, right here. Right here, this is the perfect position to start running. And it tells us that coaching, teaching, instructing, is not always going by the book and talking and talking the, the things that's written all over the place. Okay? Sometimes you have to, and of course, the right elbow, what I mean by that is that wide elbow, lead elbow, should be right here, and something like it's out there, you want to. Pull, and you gotta pull this thing back. Get yourself in motion. Thank you. <laughs>